Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I always enjoy spending time with you. As you can see, I'm in front of a door. This door has no branding, but today we are at JLP Machine and Welding. And in fact, they've never let cameras in before. And Jim himself doesn't actually do much marketing because his quality speaks for itself and almost everything is done through word of mouth. But what are they making here? Some of the highest precision, highest difficulty levels, most complicated parts that a person can make for the medical industry. In fact, one of his sayings, as you may hear him say, is give us your most difficult projects. We want those and we're gonna perfect them and send them out to you. So I'd love to take you inside now. This is an exclusive opportunity, and I will not be able to show you all of the beautiful parts that he makes. However, we're going to have one of those conversations that just might inspire you today. So let's head inside, speak with the man Jim himself, and see what he has going on behind these illustrious doors. Young man shook my hand with eyes that didn't meet mine He didn't know if he was coming or going He was left undefined Then I thought about Jim, it's so good to see you. For a second there, I thought I was going to have to talk Kid Amira on my own, but I'm very happy you made it. Oh, I wouldn't miss this opportunity. I, uh, I had a couple jobs I had to look at and go over, but... I made it, so we're I good. appreciate that. Thank yes. you so much. So speaking of jobs, I know you work on some of the most intricate, complex, difficult things on the planet being in this shop, so much so that we can't even shoot some of the footage for it. Let's talk about what you're creating. Well, we make a lot of medical components, medical implants, devices, uh, tools, and a lot of highly complex intricate little feature parts, parts that are really difficult to fixture and uh, you know that type of thing. A lot of difficult to cut materials, uh, stainless, titanium, chrome, cobalt, that type of stuff. Well I've seen some of the parts personally. I'm sorry I can't show you guys but Jim's secrets are safe with me. Now we're standing in front of these two new Kitamura machines. Yes. You just spoke a little bit about what you're doing, the intricacies of it. How does Kitamura support what you're currently making? Well when we first took on this product line, we were looking, I, I kind of knew that Kitamira was going to be the choice because they have the 30,000 RPM spindle option with these smaller horizontals. And I really, really was looking at that. We looked at some other stuff, but it, it was really the Kitamiras that had everything we were looking for, for creating this part, which is a very small titanium part. It's got a lot of little features in it that have to be surfaced on. So a lot of very small motions are being made in a very short amount of time. So That, that makes it. sense. And I've seen some of these tiny, tiny parts, which means yes. you have to be using tiny tools. We also have a lot of tools right here in front of yeah. us as well. The 30K RPM, you mentioned that immediately right away. And I know yes. we're going to talk about the importance of the precision, accessibility and of course the longevity of these machines because yes. you want them to be around for a while absolutely as well. but absolutely. let's start with the importance of that rpm does it have to do with just the tiny machining that you get into sometimes yes absolutely it's uh you know we're using 10 15 thousandths 20 thousandths ball mills and end mills in titanium and even at 30,000 rpm you're still on the bottom end of what they want to run at but by having that uh, available, I mean, these machines are running over 20,000 RPM probably 12 hours a day, and they're solid. Well, Jim, something else I'd like to bring up, and I think it's important because it brings you value as well, is Absolutely. I recently was in Japan, and I got to see the Kitamura factory, spend time with Dr. Kitamura, and I yeah. saw the way that these machines were being built, and the massive weighted castings that they sit on. Now, yeah. I know this translates to you and your business all the way up through the spindle. Would you mind describing that process for yourself? Well, yeah. For me, the first thing I look at in a machine tool is mass. Mass saves your ass in machining. So, Kitamura really knows how important it is to put that mass in particular places and how to also connect that mass to the work holding in the spindle. And that's one of the first things that really caught my eye. You always see ways that are a little bigger than everybody else. You see, um, you know, a little bit more robust casting or a lot more in many cases. 
And uh, those are some of the things that are really, really important for a good machine tool that's thermally stable, but also one that's going to last. And for me, that's a big thing. It's a really, really great answer. Let's take a moment to talk about the tombstone and the ability to run. And yes. what's unique about this conversation, because for the audience watching that watches MTD a lot, we do talk about automation a lot. We talk about high mix, low volume. We talk about high volume and low mix. We talk about the ability to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But Jim actually described something to me that I thought was quite clever. Well, he'll set up tombstones for a specific amount of time based on how many pieces and the true need to go through the pieces and make sure that they are perfect because you send out the best product to your customers that can be made. So although we can run 24 seven, yes. you've chosen other avenues, but let's talk about the overall capability of the Tombstone setup and your ability to keep the spindle running and making money. Well, what we have is I try to design the cycle times so that it's something an operator can, the, the right amount of parts are in there so that that cycle time of machining gives the operator enough time to do whatever is necessary to inspect the part. Um, in this case, it's a 100% inspection of every part and it's thousands of parts. So we're, you know, as long as that part of the process is incorporated into it, it allows us to run pretty lean and still be productive. Uh, and these machines will run, you know, 12, right now we're running 12 hours a day with them. But I have no question that they'd be able to go 24. Uh, it, it, they don't move at all from the morning to the night. So there's no reason why they wouldn't continue to run. Well, Jim, there's something I want to do and just kind of amplify who you are, because you are for sure one of the most clever people I've ever had the opportunity well, to speak you. with. And that's the fact that you have brought uh, up to me previously that you created all your own work holding to go on these tombstones because of your unique way of manufacturing and machining, right? Yes, yes. I tend to look at things more from the perspective as a machinist than an owner. Uh, I'm always concerned about profit, but I, at heart I am an engineer and a machinist, so um, to me I take a lot of pride in the work holding and the ease of use of it, the repeatability. And the parts we make are so unique and so difficult to fixture that there's not really anything available to buy to hold it. So I just kind of got accustomed to building all my own work holding. And I learned a lot of lessons throughout the time I've been doing it. And now I've kind of standardized our system here. So it definitely um, has made things that wouldn't normally be profitable in a regular job shop that depends on all the conventional work holding. Uh, it's made us so that we can be more profitable with, you know, unique work holding, in other words. I also like that answer, Jim, and again, I could talk to you all day. One more tidbit for the audience. For those of you out there who are looking for some inspiration, this guy is actually self-taught. And as I look around his machine shop, these aren't the first two Kitamuras. He's been working with Packard Machine, and there's these you actually have four Kitamuras, I believe, but a whole bunch of other machines self-taught. So for those of you out there who think, what am I gonna do? Can I learn on my own? Do I need to go to a university? Do I need to go to school? It helps, don't get me wrong, it can help, but someone like Jim has done starting from TIG welding, if you can believe that, and moved into the CNC side of things, partnering with Packard. Now, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. We're going to do something in more detail on the Gun Show podcast with you to talk about that, yep. which I'm excited about. But yep. I would like to take a moment to talk about your relationship with Packard, because although for Kid since 2015, you've yep. been working with Packard a long time. What's that yes. relationship been like? Uh, my relationship with Packard has been phenomenal over the years. We... Uh, they sold me my first machining center, and I remember the original salesman, Fran, from Packard, who I think a lot of people would know. Uh, he came down here when we were doing the rebar in the floor for this place, and, uh, you know, we became friends, and I started buying equipment. And the other interesting side of it is they always seemed to have the equipment that I wanted to buy. So I think we bought 20 four machines or 23 machines from Packard now and I've been doing business with them since 05, 06 and uh, it's been a great relationship. Their uh, service team is phenomenal. 
they're uh, very well educated in the machine tools and knowing how to take care of them and uh, we've had a great relationship through the years and I can't say enough good stuff about them. They're great. What a, a great, great way to close out this whole thing. So we're going to close this out with one more thing, Jim, I'm going to ask of you. And I know we didn't prepare for this, but when I first walked in this building, you told me a great little saying about give us your most difficult product. Give us, how does that saying go? Well, we pride ourselves on manufacturing components that are incredibly intricate, difficult to fixture, and uh, in a lot of cases, parts that no one else wants to do. So um, we take a lot of pride in providing our customers with the solutions they need to create their products, no matter how complex they are. And that's kind of where we try to target our business is on the highest complexity stuff. So Well said, Jim. Thank you so much for allowing us to film in here. Thank you for I coming. I know you've not let cameras in here before. For all of you watching, this is JLP Machine and Welding. Really a great company. Look them up. Definitely a go-to if you're in the medical industry. Uh, and give my buddy Jim a shout. Jim, one more time, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you.